Jumbo, fellow adventurers, it's Mike Dooley. Time for a spiritual tune-up. Thanks for asking your great, great questions down below on Facebook or Instagram on the days of a live broadcast, which is every day. Post on the same day as a broadcast, and I'll more likely see your questions. Today's question, it's about weight. Gaining weight, losing weight. Mike, how is weight tied to our spiritual connectedness? Or even if it is. About 20 years ago, I gained about 40 pounds. A lot of emotional stuff went on during that time. I had tried many, many different ways to drop the weight with no real success. During the COVID quarantine, I lost 30 pounds without notice. Also, going through some positive emotional stuff, empty nest after 20 years, four kids, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I am now stuck with wanting to drop the last 15, and I feel like I'm spinning my wheels and not able to get in the zone as I did before. From experience, I feel that weight can be related to emotional, spiritual growth or stuckness. I eat a plant-based diet with regular exercise, yoga, and meditation. What are your thoughts? Oh boy, oh boy. I've had the opposite issue in much of my life, trying to gain weight. And that might seem laughable for some. I, I get that I'm lucky in that way. Um, but it has been, it had been... Uh, a major struggle for a very long time. And it's only when you stop focusing on it to the exclusion of all else in your life that it starts to automatically take care of itself. That doesn't mean we can't stoke the fire. So let me tell you the obvious, okay? And then I'm going to give you some ideas for traction on shedding those pounds or gaining those pounds, whichever it is you may prefer. Okay, the obvious. Our weight, our bodily weight, is a function of so many different things. I wish it was more straightforward, but remember, life is not the Harvard of the universe. It is the kindergarten of the universe. You can do this. Even though there's a lot of things, you can do this. Excuse me. Hay fever going on here in Florida. And I'm going to do some spiritual juju on myself to get rid of that uh, that allergy that showed up lately. Exercise. Okay, I'm glad you're doing that. Nutrition. Sounds like you've got a nutritious diet. Peace of mind. Life engagement. Whoa, big one. Talk about spiritual ease. Uh, that is living and dancing life's dance and not theoretically thinking about it so much. Number five, intention and desire. And number six, confusion, fear, limiting beliefs. Food is never really the issue, okay? Your indulgence in food is an avoidance of something else, okay? Fear, confusion, those kind of things. But all of these elements uh, can be deliberately tweaked to get you on a quicker, more consistent, steady path, achieving a weight that you feel is perfect for you and not trying to achieve a weight that's perfect for somebody else. Okay, some ideas for resolution. Please continue with the exercise. If you're not exercising, start exercising. And this doesn't mean join a gym necessarily. This doesn't mean you even have to break a sweat necessarily. But please, at a minimum, go for walks around the neighborhood, uh, around the parking lot. My mom, very vain, used to back in the day, go for jogs indoors. She'd run around her living room, run up the stairs, run down the stairs, run around the living room, run to the kitchen. Just get the blood moving. It's not about sweating, although that's super healthy, but you can't do nothing, okay? You've got this beautiful mechanism. Celebrate it. It will suck if you've never exercised to start exercising, although it can be as enjoyable and simple as a walk. But the day will come. It might be six months, it might be a year, that if you go without, you're just going to feel like, oh, what is missing? What? And you're going to realize that perhaps for days or decades in your life earlier, you never had that gift of adrenaline, blood flow, energy movement in your body, which is so easy to give to yourself. Create a brand new habit that you will treasure the rest of your life. Move. Number two, nutrition. Sounds like you're doing that. Plant-based diet, I don't think it gets any better. Uh, all of us, though, 
can stand to be observant as to the stuff white sugar, white salt that we're putting in our bodies, uh, bread, white bread. Just, just be aware. Just be aware. Okay. Don't obsess. Just be aware. You're on that path. Peace, peace of mind. Turn down the stress. Best way to do that beyond quiet times is gratitude and appreciation. I, I wrote a little something in my, my practice of journaling thanks to Sarah Landon and our channeling, the art of channeling course, because I'm a lesson here, um, that really kind of blew my mind this morning. Didn't know I was going to share it with you. It's much more fun to love life. I mean, it's much more important to love life than it is to have fun. It's much more important to love life, to love your life, and it's pretty easy than to have fun. Now, maybe that's relevant to me because sometimes I feel like the fun is missing. Like I need to go play with a radio control airplane or go out and fly a kite or go play. I don't play anymore. It's like I am so much more capable with a twist in perspective to feel appreciation and joy that I get to do this. Hey, I really like doing this more than I would like flying a radio control airplane. But I'm thinking I need more fun. So I'm trying to put myself in a little box where I'm going to go do something with some toys. And it's like, uh, that maybe doesn't fit anymore. I love the, the stuff that I can do here in my mind. And with the right perspective, work becomes play. And, and it's more, uh, more important to, to love life and love your life. And that's easier to do than to go out and play. Because and go out and have fun because that kind of calls you to do stuff that you might not really ornately innately be called to do M maybe that's just for me but i thought i would share it and if you can get into that zone of gratitude and appreciation you're going to find an equilibrium that spills over into other areas of your life including metabolism and food intake and desires and balance so find peace Obviously, through quiet, maybe meditation, maybe chuck that out the window. You don't have to do meditation in any conventional way. But gratitude and appreciation is like, damn, the splendor, the beauty. I love life. I love my life. I love being me. I can get to that zone in two seconds without thinking I have to go have fun. Okay, and that is fun. All right, maybe I'm uh, dragging that on, Dra dragging that out. Here's like one of the biggest, the next point is one of the biggest. Engagement, engagement, engagement. Um, live your life, even, even if it's on the internet, interact with people, not just animals, not just your garden, okay, not just outdoors, but let there be engagement. Oh my gosh, all of a sudden, lots of possibilities for joy, falling in love, being loved, and lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. And that's going to bring balance to your life and put your metabolism in the right place and your appetite in the right place. And it's going to work out because you're living your life. It's not just here. Okay, this is so cool for loving your life. But when you're really loving your life, what do you want to do? You want to go live your life. And what did COVID do for you? To the person asking this question, it change priorities. It took your mind off of trying to lose weight, trying all these programs, trying to you know obsess along a certain line. I've got to lose weight, which just reinforces that you're, you don't weigh what you want to weigh. COVID for many of us, all of a sudden gave us something else to focus on, something bigger than ourselves, a family of four or whatever your other priorities are, now they need to be arranged. And it brought about balance through the imbalance. So this is what COVID did. And that's where your 30 uh, or 20 or whatever it was, pounds that just disappeared. COVID gave you this distraction to engage in your life in other ways. And you can do that without COVID. And you can do it with COVID. And you can do it on the internet or you can do it as a volunteer. You can do it with your job. You can do it with your friends. You can reach out to 
uh, old friends, make new friends, engagement, so that you will not be so single-minded in your little world, uh, not, no, no offense, we all have little worlds, and so single-minded in, in, I want this to happen, and I don't want that to happen. Excuse me again. <laughs> All right, the next two items. One, intention. Intend to want to achieve an ideal way. Intend to do your part. Intend to go through this checklist that I just gave you. Be mindful of your intake of food. Be mindful of your energy and exercise levels. Um, not forcing anything, but just this is one of my intentions. It's going to work out. This is the direction I want to go. You can have intention without reinforcing a sense of desperation that this is not what's going on right now. It's like, look, intention rules. Intention steers the ship of your life. Uh, intention is almost everything. Seth, through Jane Roberts, said that desire, which is a form of intention, the fuel behind intention, is a form of action. It's so powerful. So continue with your intention to achieve this ideal balance, but realize you've got all these buttons and levers to press and it's not about finding the right diet. It's engage, it's balance, it's work, it's intake, uh, it's being wise, it's choosing nutrition over um, starch kind of thing. Intention, it's okay, be there, acknowledge it, but don't be too single-minded as we were saying in the prior point. And then the last thing, to help find the fears and resolve them, to help uncover the invisible limiting beliefs, ask yourself, what am I not seeing that is plain as day for me to see? What am I not admitting that I know is the case? Um, what am I feeling or could I be feeling or want to feel more of or want to feel less of? Just come up with these discussion inner dialogue starters and go there in contemplative thought or through journaling. Uh, give yourself this playground and this space to ask the question and hear the answer. This is the inner work that people are talk, talk, that people talk about. And the inner work will show up as you love your life and therefore are called to live your life and then you stub your toe, go within. It's not about just do the inner work sitting at your desk journaling. It's about these other things that call you to life. The lions and tigers and bears show up, ask some questions, continue loving your life, engaging, diversifying. Food and your weight will ultimately be the last thing that you think about. You'll love your food and you ought to love your food and you're going to eat the stuff you want, but it's all going to be in proportion and balance automatically without any effort, even though in the beginning it's going to take intention, desire, focus, acknowledgement, admitting, questioning, uh, and those kind of things. This is what COVID brought you as a gift uh, and this is the gift of COVID for the world to reprioritize to self-reflect, to engage, to continue living, to see what's working, to see the silver lining, and take this place, planet Earth, to where it's never been before. That's where we're going. This is the most exciting time to be alive. And in that vein, let me tell you that today uh, and tomorrow are the only two days for at least one year that Hay House is offering my Playing the Matrix laser-focused course. This is the baseline of my life's work. If you want to know how and what to manifest, it's my Playing the Matrix, as far as my offerings go. And in this laser-focused course, it's about happiness, the ultimate end result. Not happiness because material things don't matter, but a happiness that recognizes that material things matter to the to the in, infinite possibility. You're a material thing. Get it on. Materiality is just spirituality with uh, such an energy and intensity that it showed up. And you have every right to rearrange the stage of your life, 
physically speaking, ethereally speaking, spiritually speaking. And if you do so with happiness in mind, you don't need to think about food or diets or money or career or livelihood. Happiness forces all of the cylinders to fire. Today and tomorrow only, this online video course that's I think normally, oh, I don't even know the numbers. So I, you have to click below. It's 50% off. At the end of tomorrow, it will not be 50% off. It will not be 50% off for a year or more. So check it out. Like everything we offer, I offer, and Hay House, 100% money back guarantee. So if it's not resonant with you, if you get it and you're like, I don't want this, then you get a full refund, a total fuel refund. Comes with workbook, a hundred real life examples of things to do to stoke your happiness that will move you towards abundance, joy, fulfillment, friends, and laughter. Lots of examples, video, an extra 45 minute bonus of how to play the matrix, and then uh, I think no, 90 minutes, and then another 90 minutes on happiness and the matrix. All right. Happy Thursday. Have the best Thursday of your life so far. Before you leave today, please post something below. Like, share, question, praise, criticism. Um, it keeps the algorithms going. I'm deeply grateful for all of you that are sharing these. Um, don't forget my podcast. Okay, enough of that. All right, lots of love from Orlando, Florida. Patty, thanks for being here. Sheila, Jamie on Instagram and in Enchanted environment. That's where we're living. Mike, glad to see you here. Lori, love the lovestress, like the mistress. Okay. The best handles in the world are on Instagram. Okay, everybody, Facebook, Instagram. Tally ho amigos. Hasta, la, hasta pronto.